Good evening, everybody. Tonight's uh, presentation is regarding a uh, wireless set number 19. So this was uh, recently acquired by myself. Um, it's uh, from another uh, uh, collector of things. He was clearing out his uh, collection of uh, items, so uh, he kindly offered it to me, and here we are. So if uh, had it here for a few days and we've uh, gone through the tubes and uh, checked things over uh, ran it up on a uh, on a Verac with a AC power supply down here on the floor and uh, we've been uh, listening away here a little bit it's uh, definitely a uh, this is a World War II uh, uh, transceiver. Uh, the date on it is uh, 1944, November 20th. So, fairly ancient and uh, definitely a uh, surprise it still works. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, we're using this with the uh, uh, number three control box and the uh, headgear. This is the, uh, the microphone and the uh, headphone setup. And uh, they connect to the rig through this control box via these snatch plugs so uh, kind of a unique uh, unique looking uh, plugs that uh, the wireless at 19s and other radios of that era used and uh, they're essentially a uh, sort of a big rubber plug just kind of pushed together definitely uh, quite unique nothing uh, didn't see anything like it really uh, used anywhere else so right now we're uh, just tuned into uh, some stations here on 80 meters. Let's see if we can hear this guy. This is a sideband station. And these r radios are not actually intended to receive sideband very much. But it can be done with some very carefully, very careful tuning of the dials. Perhaps, let's see if we can find somebody on AM. Go over to AM. There's a nice station right there. So not doing too bad. Now, one thing one has to consider is that. Uh, these radios were built to, to go into tanks and other vehicles. Um, not really necessarily uh, thought they were going to last that long. Uh, sometimes their time was measured in uh, in days or weeks. So uh, they weren't exactly uh, built uh, with the uh, highest specifications. So uh, if it's a crowded band, you're really going to have a, a bit of a time with it. However, it does work. and. Uh, not too badly, really, considering the age. Uh, I have measured the output power. It's about a watt and a half. Uh, that is into a 50 ohm load. Not really intended to be like that. Should be using the variometer, which is this device right here. This is the antenna matching device. Uh, so I have a few of those. Uh, they're always good to have extras. And uh, essentially this is uh, intended to be used with a short antenna on a vehicle. So. Um, it, uh, that is the, uh, the di device does all the work uh, as far as matching it together so anyway that is uh, pretty much the the current uh, state of affairs uh, down the road we will do a uh, I will do a video over here on the power supply this is the power supply unit you can sort of see so we'll pull that out and go through it here down the road, get it going, and uh, put it back, uh, put the radio back in its case here, and uh, and we'll give the whole thing a try as it was designed to uh, be used back in 1944. Anyway, that is our video for this evening. Thanks for tuning in.